Hello and welcome to iPredict. It's a very special show here today because if you are a very successful iPredict player, you'll definitely be picking the team that these guys are involved with. I'm Jonathan Higgins and I'm delighted to be joined by Martin and Mike Farrer from the, probably there I'll say it, the greatest and most stylish Gaelic football team in the land. Happy, Jonathan, hello you? to you both folks. How are you keeping? Not so bad. It's, uh, how do I put it? Curfin, what does it mean to you both? Did you go first, Mike? <laughs> I suppose it's it's the culture. It's it's pure football around this parish. Um, I suppose the two parishes combined, uh, the Curfin and Belclare. Um, it's I suppose we just live and breathe uh, football um, from a very young age, and it's just instilled uh, into us. And thankfully, we've been very successful over the last couple of years. Absolutely, and I'm just going to pull a rabbit trick on you. This is probably something that will bring back some special memories. A photo there for the for the camera. Special times. Uh, it's unreal. I mean, to bring it, to bring Andy Morgan back to to Curfin after seventeen years was was it was unbelievable. Um, it's something that I suppose everyone everyone dreams of uh, winning all Ireland with their club. Um, and for me to to caption such a <laughs> established team was it's um, a dream come true. Yeah, for me, that year in particular, that was my first year playing senior. So it was a huge deal for me, even to be playing for Curfin, never mind winning after the 17 years, I think, at the time it was. So it was a huge, huge year for me. And I suppose it goes back, like, I always think from, from growing up in a neighbouring club, being looking over, you kind of so envious at your, your underage structures. And I you don't like to kind of, you know, pick people out. But the name that always comes up to me is Frank Morris in terms of the underage setups. I think I'd heard him best described as the godfather of, of Curfian football at one stage, but it seems to start off like so quite young from the under sixes the whole way up. Is that something that you would have grown up as well? Would he have coached you guys as well on, on your journey to senior team? Yeah, I think that Frank was involved. Just, he's been involved. I think there's a video of the 98 team and it's, he's coaching underage back then. So he's been involved since 98 to now he's still coaching. So I think he's been involved in most teams that... That every player that has played on the team in the 2015, 2018 teams, he's been involved in. So he's huge for Curfin, yeah. And, you know, touched on it there, the, the stylish team, like Gaelic football, unfortunately, has, how do I put it politely, it's deteriorated a lot in terms of the, the viewing spectacle uh, over the last, I'd say, 10 years in particular, where it's kind of developed into what I would describe a more cagey, it's almost like a, a rugby league setup at the moment where you just have phases in play, particularly some of the some of the inter-county games can be, you know, they can be a chore to watch, and that's big words from someone that grew up playing it and would watch it all day long, but yet you guys seem to stay tr true to your beliefs and you know those basic skills that you I suppose you you honed on the on the early days growing up you've still managed to keep those crew is that something that you're very very proud of yeah definitely I think it's it's um it's out and out football um it's very attacking football and you know we can play defensively when when needs be um I suppose we like the kick passing game it's kind of instilled into us like you said uh, Frank Morris um, he was actually he was the master when I was under 14 for our yeah. failure team so there's a there's a number of good names for him um, but he's just he's he's probably the, the foundation of, of the success um, and then Dave obviously with the seniors uh, he's nearly he's nearly taken that uh, to a different level um, so we're blessed to have them at the minute yeah you touched on that failure team like that's I suppose it's even a club as famous as Curfin with such history, particularly recent history, that failure team still t stands out a lot, doesn't it? Like yeah. the, I think I heard it described that some of your all earned victories were the kind of the merge of two failure teams together. Like that's must be so. It must be so pleasing that you know lads that you grew up with that it was. You all often hear of so many promising underage teams that don't quite make it, but you've I suppose in Curfin here you have a platform where you have been able to to go on and win it at the, the top stage or the, the biggest day of the year for you guys, that must be very pleasing as well. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the, the merge of the, the two teams, that was probably really around the 2015 year, um, do you know, where you had the, I think it was the 95, is it? Um, the Kieran Fisher, is Dave Morris, is Mikey Comers. Mm -hmm. um, and then our 2004, like with the likes of Ronan Steed, um, you know, big players like that. So getting the, the, the combining the two and to go on and reach All-Ireland's success was... Um, fair achievement. 
Yeah, and it's it's one of the things, and uh, you know, I know we were talking about the the Premier League action before and here, but I can't on the way down. I was just you know I was thinking about it, and uh, one of the things that came into my head was it's kind of totally unrelated, but it makes sense when I explain it. There was a comment from Graham Souness. He was talking about an Arsenal team, and he, he described them as a, a team of brother-in-laws, and he meant that as the biggest insult you could give, in the terms of that they, they were so weak, they were the nice guy to stay around. I'd almost kind of use that what is the biggest compliment I could give to, to Curfin in the fact that you guys have, have had so much success the whole way through, but yet on the team there's no egos whatsoever. And I remember even speaking to you right after the, the Connacht final there a little while ago as well, and you, you all stopped and gave me your time and stuff like that. That must be something as well that uh, it's almost unique because often when you have teams that are they're understandably so, they do so well, they have so many achievements, but yet you've kind of you've you've managed to remain, I suppose, true to your beliefs on and off the pitch. Like that's for me as someone that deals with teams in very sports in and out, that's almost unique. Yeah. Um I suppose I was I was thinking about it yesterday, um, in terms of the management. They do well in keeping us in check. Um we've won a lot with Carfin and, and obviously heads can get up in the air sometimes. And almost un- understandably so, like given as you said, given that success. Yeah, so it's it's the management who are looking after that and they have a huge part to play in that, keeping keeping, keeping us all in check. And I suppose the leaders on the team as well, the likes of Mike, the likes of Ron Steve, the likes of these lads, these are, they, they won't let lads get too ahead of themselves as well. So it's a, it's a nice culture to have. I think uh, everyone knows not to, to go too far as well. So it's good. Yeah. And what, what keeps you going? Where does this drive come from? You've often hear the teams describing of a good team can can win a title once, a great team can win it more than once. It's been, we've seen, I know Dublin have taken it to an extreme and um, they're almost unique in, in and they're history makers in terms of, but we, up until then recently, there was a while there in Gaelic football in particular where it took teams, it was almost unheard of for a team to win even two in a row. Um, where does that drive, particularly like on a club scene as well, where You've been going, I dread to see your schedule the, the last couple of years. It's just been continuously campaign after campaign after campaign. What what keeps you going? Where does that motivation come from? Because I repeat, usually in teams like that, you see a drop off, you see a fade and I repeat, understandably so. But yet you guys are almost like freaks of the club scene. Yeah, it's kind of a game by game thing, really. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like people don't realise that like they might see the finals, the semi-finals, all Ireland, but they don't realise the amount of grinding we had to do during the years, like the amount of draws we had, like the last two years in particular, we had Mount Bellew in the, the county final, went to a replay and then tuned this year as well in a replay. And I think uh, we we also had Bridget's, we Casa had Casa Bear, all replays are, went to extra time. Hmm. So it's been a tough journey, like it's not it's not easy by any means, but um, that just stands, it just shows how how many leaders there are in the team that you have the likes of these Gary Sizes, Kieran Fitzgerald standing up in big moments in games and helping us out when we need them most. Yeah, because, uh, like, well, I suppose it's almost inevitable, you know, you can't really get a, have a discussion about Gaelic football or even hurling as well for that instance without getting, diced, you know, distracted by kind of off the field stuff. And by that, I mean pretty much the biggest thing that I suppose would be the biggest impact to you guys is, is the fixture congestion and stuff like that. And we've seen this year, even though you have won so many, this is still a new challenge in, in the fact that the, the 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 club semi-finals and final are now pushed back er, earlier in the year and that's something new you have to deal with and I remember even speaking to you Martin after the Connacht final where you guys were under the impression that the, it's only a small thing but it gives an example you guys were under the impression that the semi-finals were going to be in Crow Park now not, that's not the case it's it's going to be down in, in Ennis but how does does that frustrate you that level of uncertainty and we know we see the the big high-profile ones with like the Kier Malai where he has to juggle between Sigerson and even Liam Silkin. There's a, there's, there's a couple of other players like that as well where, like, go, going back to it. So you, the, the semi-finals this year is 5th of, 5th of January. Christmas tree is up behind us, but it's, of course, it's going to be different, isn't it? Like, how does, does for me, I get extremely frustrated looking at that. How do you guys involved in it? How how do you uh, not deal with that? But is that a frustration? Not really. I think you know. I got yeah, you guys it's, are perfect. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's the fo- obviously you're going to be missing out on a couple of nights over the Christmas. But I mean, you know, should we get over Nemo and make it to an All Ireland final? You know, please God, we've we've plenty of time for celebrating. Then okay. do you know what I mean? Yeah, and sure. and we're all celebrating together. Um. So. 
please God, that's the case. Um, but yeah, getting over the Christmas, um, it's 10 days, I think, after a Christmas day dinner. So it'll be a challenge, but and in, obviously weather conditions will probably be a bit different. But um, I suppose we try for a challenge. And like, but in terms of that restructuring, like that's a big, big, huge change. Like club finals have always been associated with St. Patrick's Day. God knows how many you you guys have made that journey so many times um, for St. Patrick's Day. But what, like, I'd just be curious, was there any um, involvement or discussions with like, say you guys, or did you have any impact in, in, in those discussions? Or was this just landed on you that this is the way it is? It's going to be fourth and fifth and that's it. I suppose the plan that they were trying to do is they're trying to shorten up the calendar year so get all the competition done in one in one year before Christmas. Um, these things do take time. It's just, I suppose it is um, a small bit of annoyance this year that has to be on the January 4th. But next year, hopefully, they change it and it'll be free then for Christmas. So. Yeah, because I know even just in a different call, but TJ Reid was, I think, interviewed after his, his recent club game as well. And he was very very irate about the changes and the, the impact it would have on, on Christmas. It has to be because we've seen it on a bigger scale where the, the, the Club Players Association have now removed themselves from the kind of suppose the, the fixture discussions, we'll, we'll call it that way. And Is that an annoyance over the course of the year? I suppose you're primarily, even on the early rounds of the Club Championship, you're primarily I suppose in a, you know, figured in and out around Galway games and stuff like that. that I've always curious to see is that uh, is that a big struggle? And now you're going to give the perfect answer, but is that a struggle like not having a set fixture fan for holidays, occasions, and stuff like that? That has to be no, even and uh, like it has to be a, a big uh, not burden. That's too strong a word because obviously you enjoy playing your football, but it could be a lot better, couldn't it? Uh, you can't plan. You can't plan anything really. To you can't plan holidays. You know if there's a replay or things like that you know you're caught like and there, there definitely has been times in the past where you have uh, lads have got caught with with holidays and things like that that, that have to, to cancel and that so there is there is that side of it there is that kind of awkwardness but i suppose they're they're trying to work it into the wooden calendar year and you know that'll give plenty of time at the start of each year for for lads to do what they want whether they want to go on holidays or, or you know, focus on their, their own bodies in a certain rehab program or things like that. So you'd imagine it should benefit the player long term, but it's just for them to try to get that schedule set in stone. Do you feel like it would be a big, uh, big help if it was condensed to one calendar period? I think, I think so, yeah. Um, I suppose previously we would have known exactly the schedule we would have been You'd have a break around the Christmas and then January 1st, January 2nd, you'd be back training and then again. And you need that kind of break even mentally to, to get away from the game and do your own thing. But um, if it was shortened up and got everything done before Christmas, at least you'll have time over the Christmas then to, to, to enjoy yourself, you could tree. say. Yeah. Comes yeah. around that tree fully. Uh, yeah, definitely, even for the for the inter-country scene, like, I mean, that was a big... Uh, yeah, something that's w- interesting, like, something would have yeah. Yeah, would have taught up because... You're not playing any FBD games or league games, or you, you know, lads can't really, you know, give it a right crack because by the time you're finished with the club, you're kind of, you're probably physically fried, but more so mentally fried. Um, so th- that was definitely an impact uh, for the lads, I think, over the last couple of years. Yeah, because it's funny you say that. Like I was having a discussion with someone uh, up in Dublin during the week, and you know, it's talking about you know the general football conversation of what's going to be like next year for Galway, and and the conversation that no matter who you talk to, it's almost the same thing. Oh, sure, look, we just get the curve in boys in. Look, look how good they are. But it's interesting that that you touched on that. It's almost the case of where doing so, being so successful for for your club, and don't get me wrong that's where you start off the club is all of the way but in terms of the next big step a lot of the times it it hindered guys in making that i suppose step on and having that time with the intercounty management in training playing challenge games etc cetera, etc cetera. i suppose that is the one going you know we touched on the the calendar reduction i suppose that's another thing where guys from the club scene now from successful club teams have that opportunity to have a bit of a break and then kind of give the, the, the inter-county team a, a better rattle, I suppose, or it gives the players more of a better opportunity? Yeah, definitely. Because, like, take... I was, it was, I was staggered to see the 98 winning team, your first club team to win the All-Ireland. I think there's only two members of that that played for Galway that year. Like, that yeah. seems a bit surreal, doesn't it? <clears throat> yeah, but they, they all would have played for, for Galway at some level, yeah, I true. think. Um, whether it be, like, from under 16 to senior. Um, I think the stat was... 
everyone who started or even came on might have played with with Galway at some age. So you know there was that it was that strong element. But yeah, only two from an All Ireland uh, club team. Just it, it just like, obviously there's a, there's other picks that Galway would have won. It's a very good Galway team. They went on to win the All Ireland, etc. But it it just doesn't seem to, to add up. And I suppose like from you know developing from such a particular style and you know as I said probably the most stylish football team out there in the land like some of the, the your recent All-Ireland wins particularly the Crokes and the Nemo ones comes to mind some of the football there was was breathtaking and I felt like Crow Park and the dry surf and the big wide open pitch kind of allowed you to exploit your your skills and your abilities to the to the national audience at the best possible scenario but that being said I spoke earlier as well about Galway football being a little bit and football in general being a little bit defensive and negatively is that a, is that a, a challenge when you're going from I suppose Kevin Walsh did, did great things for Galway he got Galway out of a where we're in a really really bad way and you know a series of, of kind of titles and stuff like that but again from outside the county the the message was always oh it's very negative football and again you'd often hear it said why can't they play like Kerr Finn is that a challenge when you're going from one particular style that you know you're so honed on to a particular system and then you're going into something that's not as uh, not as customary to what you have is is that a challenge trying to juggle two things? It's, there's no doubt it's a challenge. Um, they're two different. Um well, they're two different games, you know. Club yeah. club level, Inish County level, they're they're different games. You know, they're you really need to be a developed footballer to to step up into the, the county scene. Um, when they talk about defensive football, yeah, he did play defensive football, but I mean, he he got results. Um, it wasn't always pretty, but I mean, he did bring Connacht titles uh, back, oh, back yeah. to Galway, which was massive because it was so far away when he started his reign as well. Yeah, crazy. Um, so he he's he's did his he's done his bit, um, and hopefully Park can can push on now as well and and bring some some more success. Does uh, I'm just curious, and I'm going from you know such a honed way and seeing the rewards of it some way. Is does that like do you feel like the particular the kind of the attacking system that you developed? And don't get me wrong, I curve in or they're not like de- you're you're not defensively stupid and stuff like that where you all run forward all the like you, when you have to defend you defend and then you you play your football that that blend is that something that you'll hope like from looking at a bigger picture that Parry can he seems I know he's very vocal about th- all the interviews he's done to date and the style of football that he's done with the under 20s in particular is I suppose to go back to we won't call it the Carfin model, but a bit more of the tr- traditional Galway menu, uh, where it's a little bit more free flow and a little bit more attacking. Would that excite? You? That ex- obviously has to excite you going to, looking forward to, to the Galway setup as well. well. We've been in there for one or two training sessions um, just after the Connacht there, and we've seen what what's going on. It looks very positive. He's looking to move the ball fast, and he's what he's saying is true in training. So hopefully. He'll push on with that the game plan for the next while. That must excite you as well, but particularly coming from a system that has had so many rewards playing that I suppose similar similar type that now you're going to be able to hopefully replicate that on the inter county scene. Well, as a forward, it's it's good when you, when you know that the lads are going to be kicking it in as fast as they can. So hopefully, yeah. Let it inside quick. <laughs> that's the that's the yeah, worst. Yeah. That's the key. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. Like I, um, it's a little bit of a side tangent, but it it flicked into my head and it's coming to my head there again. John Dively's always also involved in the the Galway Inter County setup as well, and I kept getting flashbacks to that ninety eight goal the in the All Ireland final against Kildare. The, I suppose the defining score of the game really, and it was John Dively getting a free kick centre half position he boots the ball in and then it goes into PJ who does the little shimmy around the keeper and into the net it's it'd be how how I suppose it's funny how life comes around in circles and now now the two of them are back trying to implement uh, a, a similar similar yeah so yeah whoever's in full forward let it in quick <laughs> it could be one of you guys <laughs> well the way PJ says as well he said he didn't like in his career like whatever way the ball came in he was happy as long as it was coming in like you know yeah. so I, that's the plan this year anyway he seems, seems to be getting onto the wing backs in midfield to move the ball fast so that's encouraging mm. very good and if we can uh, as everyone keeps hopefully people will stop annoying me can we not see the curve in system <laughs> in in play for, for Galway for the year um, looking forward I suppose the, the next you've always talked about the next game being important and by god the next the next big competitive game for you guys is a it's a belter of a game really isn't it it's I think I, think I heard someone best describe it as you know two absolutely titans of the game coming together. You have the serial winners from the West versus the serial winners from the South. You've had a 
good bit of recent history with each other as well. Must be a game where I know I can't, I personally can't wait, but it must be exciting for you guys as well, having that to, to keep you going, not distract you too much from the tree. But it is, uh, I suppose, if you have to have the, the chore of staying in a night, turning down an extra drink here, here or there, whatever, to have such a big game to, to, to be looking forward to and, and to line up, that must be. Well, that's it. People can be giving out about uh, that we have no break or things like that. But then the day we're in All Ireland semi-final, and these don't come around too often. Like so, it's going to be an enjoyable game, and they're, it's a tough opposition. Like we know what Nemo are about, and they've been there and thereabouts for the last few years. So they're a savage team. They're used to success. I mean, they're, they're like you said, they're a successful club, and they have a serious um, they have a serious setup down there. So, I mean, we know that they're going to bring everything everything to us, and um, we look forward to the challenge. Very political answer there, guys. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a, it's an I predict, um, which is um, as the, exactly as it says in the tin. It allows you the opportunity to to predict sporting events. I think it's cover most of the the leagues now here and there. Um, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to put you on the fence. I think I had you worry there for a second. Uh, I am going to predict a curve in when I better. I won't get out of here alive. <laughs> Speaking about Christmas, I'll have no Christmas to go to if uh, if I predict. But yeah, no, it is a it's an it's an exciting game. It's it's one to for all the football fans to to keep an eye out. Um, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, great to talk to you. Great to get a kind of an insight into here, as I said, in the in the, the home of Curfin, two of the most prominent guys in the in the attacking uh, lineup on the on the Curfin side as well. So I, I can be a little bit biased here. I have to be the, the owners over in the corner here as well, looking at me, giving me daggers. I would I do wish you all the be the best in the game. Hopefully we can uh, yeah, I'll say it. Hopefully you can go all the way, two step two more big games hopefully and, and bring in another trophy and create the history that I think this team and this club deserve. So exciting times. Um, keep an eye out for the on the I predict website as well there's loads of happening there uh, loads more exciting content as all as the games are ongoing it's you know it's, it's always the great sporting debate as well between your friends who who knows more about it so keep an eye out for that and we will talk to you all very soon mm -hmm.